Welcome back to our workshop. Now, today we're going to be uh, showing a video demonstrating uh, the all-important job of regulating key dip and aftertouch. Um, here we've got a console piano that we're uh, going to be doing the demonstration on. Uh, basically, key dip is the amount of uh, distance or the distance that the key will go down uh, before it hits the punchings um, underneath the front rail. Okay, so here we've got uh, the front rail and here we've got here we've got the front rail and the front rail punching so underneath each key are usually a front of uh, a front felt punching and then also maybe some paper and cardboard punchings to adjust the the final um, measurement um, so the amount that that goes down uh, it, it can vary a little bit from one piano to another but uh, Generally, it's going to be somewhere between three eighths and seven sixteenths of an inch <clears throat> that the key should go down um, uh, as far as measuring the key dip. Now, here we've got um, a key dip block. This one's a three eighths inch. We also have uh, thirteen thirty seconds, and um, we also have the seven sixteenths available. So those are the different. And what the and what you, the way these work is, you would put the the key dip block on the front of the key, uh, press mm -hmm. it down. And measure measure it, and this of course is after the keys have been leveled. Um, but uh, you can feel if if it's level with with the key next to it. Okay, now this is three eighths, goes down slightly further than three eighths, um, so it's maybe closer to thirteen thirty seconds. Yeah, pretty close. Now thirteen thirty seconds is. Uh, is a little bit so there, this is a little bit higher than the key next to it, whereas the three eighths was a little bit low. Um, so it's somewhere between three eighths and thirteen thirty seconds. Now, the, um, of course, this step is done after you've got your basic um, uh, uh, hammer blow distance um, and let off and, and uh, lost motion taken care of. Uh, to um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to measure. We've got uh, a new New tool, a new gauge that uh, that we've uh, come out with is um, the aftertouch gauge, and what it is is um, it's a series of five different thicknesses of plastic um, gauges that uh, can fit underneath the key pin, so that you can measure uh, how much aftertouch you have. Aftertouch uh, is the amount that the key falls down after achieving let off. Okay, so for example, I'll push the key down a certain amount and if you watch the hammer, okay, I can get to a certain point and there's still some key travel after the hammer reaches let off. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that in the video, but the hammer falls back slightly if you're pressing down really, really slowly on the key and you can feel some key movement after um, after that let off occurs, okay, that that amount of key travel that the that the key makes after the the action achieves let off is called after touch. Uh, you want some, uh, but you don't want too much. Uh, gen in general, um, they say forty thousandths of an inch is the right amount, but um, it uh, you know it depends on other factors. Um, some pianists prefer less or more after touch. But uh, generally, forty thousandths is a good um, gauge to go by. Now, <clears throat> here um, the thicknesses we have in our aftertouch gauge are twenty thousandths, thirty thousandths, forty thousandths, fifty thousandths, and sixty thousandths. Okay, so we're going to demonstrate what some of these look like. Um, now, this first one. Uh, now, what you want to do, you can put the gauge either on top of the felt punching or underneath. It probably it works a little bit better if you put it underneath uh, then you get a little more accurate measurement. But uh, So I'm going to put it underneath the punchings and I've already adjusted this to be at about twenty thousandths of an inch. So um, here I'm using my .020 um, gauge and I'm going to put that under the felt and, and uh, paper punchings and as I push down you can see the hammer well, just I, I, if I, with a moderate amount of pressure, it just reaches the point of let off. Okay, if I push it extra hard, I can get it to go past. But um, you want to measure it with with a moderate amount of of pressure on that. Okay, so if I if I push it down, 
and give it that extra little push I can tell so that the, so then I know <clears throat> I'm at about 20 thousandths of a of an inch for after touch which is about the minimum that you'd want uh, so, you know again that's probably a little bit little bit less but uh, when I play that it actually feels good and that that's what's what's important okay if I were if we if I were to for example put the 30 thousandths punching under there I can't really get it to reach let off completely. So going on to the next one, I think I've got this one adjusted at about fifty thousandths. Okay, which is probably a <clears throat> a bit much. Okay, if I were to put the gauge under under the key, I've got my fifty thousandths here. Put my gauge under the key. And once you put your gauge under there, you want to kind of settle that punching again. But uh, if I go on under here, I can get it to just reach let off, and again with that extra pressure, I can get it to go past let off, but not without putting extra force on there. So, if we wanted to say um, take that from fifty to forty thousandths, we would basically just take a, a ten thousandths of an inch front rail paper punching, put it under there. Okay. Now, just going back, just for an example, to if I put my fifty thousandths under there, you can see this isn't close. It won't reach let off at all. Okay, I could probably, if I pushed hard enough, I could probably get it to go to let off. But um, so we're going to go with the forty thousandths. And again, here we're going to. This is about where we should be at with um, the measurement. And there I can go to just, and then if I just give it that little extra push. I can see it, it reaches let off. So, so that's, um, that's how to adjust it. Um, this one, this one I think I've got uh, adjusted about 60,000. So it's, it's pretty, um, a pretty deep let off. So that's at 60. Um, and if you notice our key dip, I'm going to use the 7 16 inch block. So this, this key dip is at a, right at 7 16 inch. And um, for most pianos, that's probably a bit too much. So <clears throat> the other way to adjust the, the aftertouch is by adjusting the hammer blow distance, which uh, we'll talk about in another video. But this is, um, this is a demonst demonstration of uh, showing the, how to adjust the, the um, aftertouch you know, by adjusting the number of of paper and cardboard punchings that are that are underneath the key, and uh, which ultimately adjusts um, the the um, key dip. Now, in this piano, um, before I before I adjusted any of these, I went and uh, checked, and the amount of aftertouch was almost nothing, and that's without you know it was it was down to about zero or maybe five thousandths of an inch so it was way too much and there weren't actually any paper or cardboard punchings underneath the felt punching so what I had to do is I had to use thinner uh, felt punchings because they, they had pretty thick I think these are about two hundred thirty five thousandths uh, thick front rail punchings that were in there so I took those out now what I could have done is I, I could have raised the balance rail um, you know to be able to do that but I felt like I had a good um, a uh, good uh, hammer blow distance, and so I instead went decided to go with adjusting the the um, felt front frail punchings on the front of the key to be able to achieve the correct key dip uh, and after touch. So um, all of these parts, including the key dip blocks and the after touch gauges, these are all available on our website at howardpianoindustries.com.